Nike Hot Seat special guest, a man that has won 13 World or Olympic medals between 83 and 96, and he's the new president of USA Wrestling, our living legend, Bruce Baumgartner. Bruce, how are you? Hi, Scott. I'm doing very well. Thank you. And what was a bit of a surprise move, because I think he had two years left in his, uh, uh, in his position as president, James Ravenack has said, hey, I, I really got to step aside. We need to have an election. And so an election took place. And August 6th, you were recognized by your peers and a vote was taken. And you were elected the new president of USA Wrestling. Bruce, congratulations. Thank you, Scott. It, it, it's an honor. Um, you know, it's filling in or, or replacing Jim Ravenack is going to be an extremely tough task. But uh, Edinburgh or uh, USA Wrestling is an absolutely outstanding organization, a lot of great volunteers and, and a great uh, professional staff. So I'm really excited about the position. And some would see this as a natural progression. You've been there, done that as an athlete. You've been there, done that as a coach. Now as an athletic director at Edinburgh as well, a long-term athletic director. You've been on the board of directors of USA Wrestling for, well, in excess of 10 years easy. but. Uh, you know, this is quite an honor to be leading the organization, isn't it? Oh, yes. I, I was president back, I believe, from 1998 to 2002. And uh, one, of, one of the things we wanted to do at, at USA Wrestling is try to align the presidencies with the uh, Olympiad. So we're trying to keep it on a four-year rotation, uh, you know, with the president starting at the new quadrennium and, and finishing at the, you know, at a quadrennium. So, um yeah, 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 you know, USA Wrestling is a great organization. You know, it's helped so many little kids wrestlers right through the Olympic movement, like uh, people like myself that uh, you just try to give back. It's a volunteer board position, obviously, and, um, you know, it's about giving back to the sport. You have some interesting people that have joined you on the board of USA Wrestling, and it's a neat staff indeed, and they come from all walks across the country, guys like Greg Strobel and and uh, James Ravenick, as you mentioned, of course, Rich Bender heading up the organization, and John's, or, um, <laughs> Leroy Smith, I wanted to say John, but uh, and so many others. It's a evolving board as it continues to grow, and you guys are continuing to, to reassess what the board's job is and the direction of USA Wrestling. How difficult a task is that? Well, I think it's a very difficult task. We, we have a long-range planning committee, um, you know, over the last four years, we, we've revamped the board. I, I think what people don't realize about USA Wrestling, it has, you know, uh, membership or inclusion on the board from just about every aspect of wrestling. I mean, it, it has uh, NCAA representatives, uh, Mike Moyer, the National Wrestling Coaches Association. It has the uh, Federation of High School, um, you know, for the high school representation. Uh, so it, it really it has 20 percent of the board is, is active athletes. Uh, it, it is a a pretty representative group. But obviously, a lot of them, the people come from the structure, the the kids organization, the state leaders, the state chairman. Um, you know, we try to it, we call it a grassroots organization. So there, there's uh, about 42 board members represented just about every wrestling you know area we I think we have now four or five at-large members, you know, people that are voted in from outside of the, um, you know, maybe the, the very close wrestling community. Uh, I think the armed services have a uh, representation. So it, it's a pretty representative organization. And also on there, uh, which doesn't surprise me because I understand how closely we do work hand in hand. And often the audience or the fans, the, the officials, as perhaps not necessarily on board with Team USA, but Rick Tucci and, and uh, uh, as he represents all the officials around the country and those that uh, officiate our sport, they're a very important part of what we do, and they're a very important part of our board as well. Exactly. I mean, it, it has, like you said, it, it has officials representation. And so it, when we discuss the issues, um, at least over the last about 10 years, because I think the board has been working more and more efficiently. Um, you know, we, we take and look at all views of an issue before we move forward. And, um, you know, our, our membership is up. I, I think, uh, you know, I'm real excited about uh, 
how the Olympic team's chances are. You know, and again, you have to go down there and perform, and it's all going to happen on the map. But, you know, we, we have some real legitimate medal contenders down there in Rio. You've got an interesting staff in place. Uh, one of those that we don't salute enough is Gary Abbott and the fine work he does marshalling his uh, his staff, limited as it is, guys like Richard Immel and, and others, Taylor, just joining the ranks. But uh, it's a big job promoting the sport. Let's take a look ahead at how we do that. Um, you guys, I mean, this is not a new job. We were challenged not that long ago by the International Committee uh, suggesting that wrestling go away from the sport, from the Olympic Games in particular. Uh, you, uh, James Rabinak, uh, Rich Bender, the entire talented team, the extended group, really did get together with the international flavor as well and uh, helped marshal the forces to bring back a positive opinion and a positive vote, uh, in, in, coincidentally, in Brazil. Uh, this was a time when, when everybody's eyebrows were raised just a bit as to are we doing enough to promote our sport? Perhaps we were to the general public, but not to the world of sport. Would you agree with that? Well, I, I think a lot of things came out of what, what we call the CPOW effort, but it really was a, a world effort to change wrestling. The leadership at what was FILA was changed. Now it's United World Wrestling. Um, uh, you know, that's the international governing body for wrestling. Uh, it, we made some great changes in the rules, and, and not just when I mean we, not just the United States of America, the, the wrestling organizations throughout the country. And, and the one thing I think that really hit home is that, that if you look at the events that we have run at, at uh, USA Wrestling and even throughout the world, you know, the World Cup the last couple of years has been much more professionally run. Uh, it's a step up from what it's been in the past. Uh, the world championships in Las Vegas, there, there's more media attention. Uh, wrestling has really started to embrace. And, and if you look at, and I don't have the statistics, but uh, USA Wrestling does very well amongst the NGBs on website hits, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, you know, uh, hits and so forth. So we're reaching out over than just the traditional media outlets and, and trying to promote the sport. Uh, we've had better TV coverage. You know, Scott, it's, a, it's still a huge, huge task and improvements need to be made. But I, I think, you know, USA Wrestling, I'll say wrestling throughout the world, um, you know, it got the wake up call in, in 2013 that it needed to modernize and better the sport, uh, promote it better. And, and I think it, it has. And, and we still have to keep that momentum and we can never sit back on our laurels and say, oh, we did a good job. We have to continue to do a good job and continue to improve. Bruce Baumgartner, our guest, the new USA Wrestling president. He's in the Nike hot seat today, and that's more of a welcoming seat. We've been uh, long admirers of this very talented man on the mat. He's represented the United States, and perhaps no, no greater moment than when you carried that flag. You and I have talked about this, Bruce. Uh, you carried that flag into the Olympic Stadium and uh, represented the team and the United States. It was a vote of your peers that you would do so this time, this year, uh, this 2016 Olympiad, uh, they, they voted, and it was a public vote, as to who would carry the flag. And many thought, and odds on favorite, uh, to carry that flag was Jordan Burroughs, when in fact Jordan Burroughs did not get the honor. It went, in, 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 in fact, to a swimmer. Um, should Jordan Burroughs have been that guy? You know, I'm really biased. I like Jordan. He's a great guy. So I would say yes. I, I think he <laughs> could have gotten it. He is he is what the Olympic movement is about. Now, if you look at, you know, Michael Phelps, you cannot argue he is, you know, if not the greatest Olympian, um, or at least he has the most medals, uh, he has to be in the, the um, <clears throat> conversation for being the greatest Olympian. So, can you really um, dispute or argue, you know, one person over another? I, I, I personally, you know, Jordan is unbelievably good person, a family person. You know, um, he he would have been an absolutely fantastic pick. You know, can you say it was 
wrong that Michael Phelps, who you know has all the medals and all the number of Olympics, I don't know if you could say it was wrong, but um, you know, as a wrestling guy, I would have loved to see Jordan Burroughs. And, and again, you know, Michael Phelps also is a, is a great Olympian, so it's hard to down one over the other. No, I'll take my Jordan Burroughs any day. I got to tell you, coach. I got to tell you. All right, so the job, obviously, of being president of USA Wrestling is not necessarily one that uh, says, well, just sit back in Edinburgh and rule from there, be the president from there. You have to travel. There is some travel. Obviously, Edinburgh University is your primary as you're the athletic director there. It's a big job in and of itself. But uh, being elected to this position yet again to serve out a four-year term, this is quite an opportunity. What's the university's position on your travel, both nationally and internationally, and how does that affect your job? Well, Scott, you know, the university's been very, very supportive. I, you know, I have been traveling uh, a decent amount for, for USA Wrestling uh, already. Um, you know, I've been the vice president for some years. I, I've been going to the Beat the Streets Galas, the Olympic Trials, national championships, different meetings uh, throughout the country. Um, uh, you know, the World Cup, uh, the gala. So it, it's, you know, yes, will my travel increase some? Um, but, you know, it's not going to go from zero travel to 100 trips a year. It, it, it's going to go to a reasonable amount. Uh, we have an unbelievably good board structure. So, uh, you know, not only will I be representing USA Wrestling, but Jim Ravenack can represent USA Wrestling as a past president or, you know, some of the other board members. So, yes, my primary focus uh, as with any, um, you know, volunteer board member it is my job at Edinburgh. And I think we have a, a great athletic department, great university at Edinburgh uh, University and uh, just some phenomenal student athletes. You know, as you know, we're division two in all sports, but wrestling and very competitive in most of our sports and, and working on those. Uh, and we do have the struggles, you know, at a state school like Edinburgh to uh, continue to grow. But, you know, that's obviously a, a, a great focus of mine and been very successful in the past um, but you know USA Wrestling is, is uh, a passion of mine and I, I've been involved for a long time and really want to see it to continue to grow and, and it'll be a balance it, it's a going to be a sacrifice uh, on some personal time but you know I'm real excited about my the opportunities for USA Wrestling to grow and Jim Ravenack did a phenomenal job as did the current you know the, the previous board of storting the organization and helping to grow it. Uh, we have a phenomenal professional staff at USA Wrestling. So I really think that there's some great opportunities uh, for myself, for the sport of wrestling. Uh, I think we have a great board, uh, great uh, you know, uh, officers of, of the board. Uh, I, I just, I'm excited about the opportunities, both at Edinburgh University and at USA Wrestling. Bruce, the final uh, point I'd like to make, or at least final topic within the interview, is you've been there uh, for the very evolution of the uh, of women's inclusion in the sport and the growth of women's wrestling. Had an opportunity to go one on one with Kira Berry yesterday, uh, live from uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and the day before with uh, Coach Terry Steiner. Athletes, the women, are getting uh, more media attention. Their talents are going through the roof. Look at Adeline Gray, for example. Look at Helen Maroulis, another one. Uh, but we have an opportunity right now, the, perhaps the best we've ever had, to bring home medals and in quantity in women's wrestling. Uh, are you satisfied with the growth it's, it's uh, achieving right now and the attention it's getting? And do you foresee uh, additional growth in the future? Well, I think, and in, in at the board meeting, you know, we discussed women's wrestling, and, and we have just, a, a, I think, a phenomenal women's wrestling program right now, and, and it needs to grow. It, it, you know, Adeline Gray, Helen, and, and the other young ladies down there are doing a, a phenomenal job representing us. Uh, you know, they're, when I talked about, we have a lot of athletes with, with metal potential. Obviously, there's three or, three or four uh, women there that have that opportunity. Um, you know, we, we need to grow our numbers, at, at, well, in all participation, but specifically women at the high school and the college levels. You know, we're, we're not recognized yet as an NCAA sport uh, for women. We haven't reached the emerging sport status. 
uh, you know, programs are growing for the women at the college level, but maybe not at a fast enough rate. Um, it, it is tough with the economics and the way the Division I programs have gone to the, you know, five mega conferences. But, uh, you know, at the high school level, and, and, you know, we received a report from the Federation of High School uh, um, at the board meeting last week, you know, it is growing at the high school rate uh, at women's wrestling at the high school. And, and we need to keep that growth and improve it. Uh, that is, you know, I don't want to call it the feeder system, but the more high school athletes we have, the more college programs we can create, the more college programs, the larger the talent pool is, you know, for the international. Some of our international uh, level women come through the high school ranks or, or through the uh, uh, college ranks, and some go right on to, to Colorado. I, I believe Al Adeline Gray, um, you know, skipped the college programs and, and went out to Colorado Springs to train and, you know, took some, you know, taking classes at some, you know, universities out there. So, you know, we have to continue to make opportunities available for all athletes, male or female, but we need to kind of try to grow the, um, you know, the, the women's, uh, because it, it has such a huge upside for growth. Oh, absolutely. Bruce Baumgartner has been our guest in the Nike hot seat today. Our congratulations go to him, but I'll turn uh, the tables on him as well. I'm going to tell him that, uh, Bruce, you've been an inspiration to many of us, including me. Uh, 13 World and Olympic medals aside, how you've carried yourself on behalf of the United States, your leadership, uh, the stories of your leadership as a competitor, as a coach, as an AD, and of course a board member are phenomenal, and they're all real, they're all true. And uh, I can never thank you enough for what you've done for the sport and what you continue to do. Now again with the opportunity as a returning president of uh, the, the board of USA Wrestling, we've got a big job on our hands as it continues. Bruce, congratulations, thank you, and uh, I'm sure we'll be talking very, very soon. Thank you, Scott. You know, you, you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. and. You know, having people like yourself and, and others involved in the sport, uh, I think our sport has a rich has a rich history and a great future. Thank you, Bruce.